Alleged Chinese election meddling dominated Parliament Hill again today as MPs grilled senior public officials about what they knew and when they knew it. Was the panel aware that the Conservative Party had provided concerns about interference targeted at Conservative candidates? Yes or no? The panel was briefed about activities that were happening in uh, ridings that were difficult to attribute to foreign interference at the time and that were uh, uh, potentially um, uh, of interest. It did not rise to the level of the panel adjudicating it as a matter of uh, foreign interference in the election of a riding or at a national level. Okay, other witnesses, including the director of Canada's spy agency, confirmed that the overall integrity of the 2019 and 2021 elections were not compromised. Fred Delory served as a conservative campaign manager for the 2021 federal election. He joins me in the studio now. Fred Delory, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me on. What did you make when you heard from Rod Stewart there, that, that things just never rose to the level that they needed to intervene? Yeah, so there's a task force set up where we could get briefings from, from the officials and we would also provide what we had been seeing on the, on the ground from our local campaigns. This was, throughout the campaign and after, it was really a one-way street. We weren't getting much or anything uh, from them in terms of what they were seeing, but we were providing them with ample uh, evidence that we saw of interference. So you saw ample evidence of interference and, and they've all concluded that despite evidence presented to them and what came from CSIS and CSE and the RCMP, it never rose to the level that it had a material effect on the election. Do you accept that finding? Yeah, the, the feeling we got was that they were shrugging their shoulders and that there's a legislative gap and there wasn't anything that they could do on it. What kind of a legislative gap do you mean? I know there's been some question about the threshold that mm -hmm. if it's not above a certain level, they don't do a public intervention. Is, it, is that the issue? There? Well, there's, there's lots of things that aren't clear here. Uh, like today, we, I just heard for the first time Elections Canada's open an investigation. This is a year and a half ago. We've raised this a year and a half ago. We brought stuff then. What, what was the threshold now that wasn't then? It's the same evidence. Right. I, I think it's the Commissioner of Canada's elections is doing a review mm. of complaints they, they have received in light of the new information to see if there was anything there. So they, they made the distinction it's a review, not an investigation. But I take your point that suddenly the media reports have put a lot of new intensity and new light on this. But are you of the view that, that the critical election incident response panel, I guess you say they shrugged their shoulders, right? I mean, they, you don't think they did enough despite it, it being CSIS, the RCMP, and the, the top uh, public servants? Well, that was the feeling we got from it. Our representatives on there, they brought evidence to it and it felt like there was this, they're basically saying, I believe they're actually told there's a legislative gap, that there's something here that needs to be fixed on that front. Okay, one of the challenges uh, that, uh, for example, we'll use the example of Kenny Chu. Uh, in, in Steveston, Richmond East, uh, significant East Asian, South Asian population in that riding, ripe for this sort of targeting, as, as has been outlined in these reports. Uh, the argument coming back from the civil servants who weighed the evidence pre presented to them on this was that they couldn't determine that it was foreign interference and couldn't determine whether it was state-sponsored. It could have just been normal domestic meddling that happens in elections. I, I, I mean, what's your reaction to, to findings like that coming from, from the committee? Well, there's different, there's different uh, things that happened as well that really call into question. WeChat is a very popular social media program run by Chinese government officials. And we were seeing instances where very negative, nasty attacks against conservatives, really outlandish stuff. And at the same time, any time a pro-conservative uh, message would go on there, it would disappear. So it's hard to say that there was nothing happening here without hearing about the stuff like that that was happening. That happens everywhere in the elections, right? I mean, you've seen that with, mostly between the conservatives and the liberals, like uh, they're, or they're targeted. The conservatives and the liberals are targeted. I mean, what makes you suspicious that it wasn't just the normal partisan meddling and interference and, and, and attempting to do reputational damage that happens in all elections and maybe rises to the level of... Yeah, it seemed, it seemed to be happening at a, at a bigger scale than something we've never seen before. Like, you, you, you know, you see things on Twitter and Facebook and different things like that happen, mm -hmm. but this was a much larger scale. Okay, so but you, you, you don't dispute the total outcome of the election, right? No, no of course okay. not. So, but what do you think they should do now? I mean, you, you, the, the committees have been de debating for the last two days. Mm -hmm. You've got the opposition parties. They've passed a resolution in some form today at, at the procedure of House Affairs Committee to call for a national public inquiry. You know, as a guy who yeah. ran the election, that, that sort of is at the heart of this. What do you think of that? Do you want to see one? I, I see a, a public inquiry, I think, would be very challenging. given This is a national security issue. And I think we have other mechanisms, again, back to the legislative gaps. We have a committee, the National Security Intelligence Committee, that is a multipartisan committee. 
And if we can get those people, um, if the prime minister would take leadership on this and give them a mandate to investigate this, give them the powers to do this and to look at what happened. But my big concern is not just what happened in 2021 or 2019 or before that. What's going to happen in the next election? These other, there, there's other countries. We're talking about uh, Chinese influence. There's lots of other countries that have, could have influence or interest in our elections. And we need to get on top of this. And I think we need experts and people looking at this and a real permanent uh, potential thing looking at this issue. So, so the National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, NSICOP, with the awful acronym that, that goes by, the Prime Minister has suggested that this is a place where this could be reviewed, right? That it should go there because everybody has top secret security clearance. They mm -hmm. can see the full information and they can issue a finding. They can't reveal the evidence, though. They can't reveal the information because of the national security rules. So in a political sense, do you see the limitation of that? Because I don't get the sense the conservatives in particular well, look, want that. A public inquiry would be a great uh, political theater. It'd be yeah. a lot of fun. It'd be great television. Uh, but I don't know what we actually get. To me, I'm, I'm looking at what are the outcomes of this. I would like to see good legislation coming forth. Give Elections Canada the teeth it needs to do the work to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, make sure it has the ability to enforce these laws as well. Uh, and make sure that these groups are communicating. It sounds like, like does the task force and Elections Canada RCP, are they talking together at the level they need to be? You said political theater. Do you think that's what the opposition parties are looking for? Right now? Look, it's it's uh, it feels like that right now, and at the same time, the prime minister needs to show leadership and make a. We have to do something on this. But if the prime minister, for example, uh, asks you to be partisan for a second, I mean, if the prime minister tries to send it to a committee of, of MPs where it is done in secret and there is no public component to that other than a report with findings. Will that even remotely satisfy critics? Or because he's being accused of covering this up, right? So if he takes that route, it's, it seems like that's going to be it's, the. It's outcome. the beauty of our political system. You'll <laughs> never ever please the opposition. Right. So what, what then can be put on the table that might mollify them to some degree? I know you can't please them necessarily, and certainly not the conservatives on this, because you, you've, you've seen the committee today well, where they're it, trying to go it, with it. it but it, it's a legitimate concern they have about trust in the integrity of the system, right? right? So what is the option if it's not a public inquiry and the conservatives wouldn't necessarily go along with NSI COP as the venue for that? Well, I think with, with NSI COP, uh, there's two members that are appointed by the conservatives and mm -hmm. the NDP appoints members. So there are people there that should give them trust that that could work. Now, I'm not saying a public inquiry is, is out of the question. I just have issues with the, the thought of a major national security issue being dealt with in this forum. I just don't know what we're going to get out of that. Because again, you may get uh, a report, you may get something, but will there be solid legislative outcomes from an inquiry? And that's what needs to happen. We need to give teeth to the enforcement agency so that they communicate together, work together, and make sure this does not happen. Do you think this is something that, you know, you run elections, right? You know how complex and all the moving parts at the different riding levels. Is this something we can even deal with in real time during the writ period? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it seems tough to me. Minority make. parliament makes this all very, very challenging. We could go to the polls any time now. Um, and that's another reason why an inquiry like that could take a very long time. I think, I think there needs to be some kind of structure set up that is always looking at this and that is much more uh, forward thinking in terms of the legislation. But during the writ period itself, right, to detect it, investigate it, assess it, determine whether it's foreign, determine whether it's state sponsored and then decide uh, what actions to take in the six weeks or whatever of a campaign. I mean, can we realistically deal it's with tough. this in real it's, time? it's really tough because then you got to wonder if, if anything leaks out, is it going to hurt one party in terms of the, the voting public as well? So it's very, that's a very challenging uh, thing that will be in, in front of us and how to deal with this. Right, and we saw the James Comey impact, for example, on the election right. in the United States, the Ralph Goodale uh, letter, yes. the investigation income trusts uh, back when, when he was the finance minister in the Paul yeah. Martin government. So the, you mentioned this is a minority parliament. Um, we could have an election. I mean, I'm one of the people who thinks it's not going to happen this year, 2024, 2025 is what I'm thinking. I mean, what, what's the one or two big things you think we need to have in place before we have a, a federal election in this country again? Well, in terms of the legislation going forward, like it's something that can look into this, find out what the gaps are and fill those gaps. Uh, a foreign agent registry, that's something that doesn't exist in Canada that almost every other country has, uh, where we can find out who's lobbying on behalf of other countries and doing work for them in this in Canada. Um, also, again, just better communication between our organizations with uh, Elections Canada and the task force. Okay, Fred Delory, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me on. Former Conservative MP Kenny Chu says Beijing operated a disinformation campaign against him during the 2021 federal election. The Globe and Mail reported earlier this month, citing a national security source, that Chu was targeted in retaliation for his criticisms of China. The Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, David Morrison, was pressed about the alleged campaign against Chu during his testimony today. 
we were aware of um, what I think the rapid response mechanism called activity or unusual activity, but we were advised by the rapid response mechanism that that um, it, it was not possible, and they, and they did um, read everything in Chinese, that it was not possible to attribute that to uh, necessarily to non-Canadian sources, non-Canadian citizen sources, or to state-sponsored sources. Kenny Chu is a former Conservative MP. He joins me now. Mr. Chu, thanks for joining us. Hi, David. Good afternoon. I, I'd like to start with your specific riding and the specific concerns you had about meddling in the race in, in Steveston, Richmond East, I believe it was, uh, and your concerns that it maybe have been Chinese state interference. David Morrison said today that when they investigated this during the election, they could find no evidence that this was mo conducted by a foreign state or was foreign interference at all. What's your reaction to that finding? Well, I appreciate the... Um the bureaucrat in charge of uh, that to say that there has been no uh, foreign interference evidence that found uh, during that. But unfortunately, we're, we're you know Canada is facing a uh, asymmetric uh, campaign against us in all front, uh, not just in information but also clandestine uh, operations that are uh, infiltrating our communities and all that. And that's why. Uh, it was ceases that actually had uh, um, broke out the the news, uh, and you know it seems like there are brave and courageous bureaucrats in ceases that has actually got information, um, and instead of that that are information that are available to elections officials or the commissioners that are service in, in terms of ceases, and and these informations are uh, critical in in telling Canadians the kind of under table in the shadow operations that we are we're facing it's critical and important that we uh, as canadians uh, face the reality that uh, just like many other western countries uh, our allies we are constantly under these infiltrations from aggressive predatorial uh, regime such as Russia or or China in this case. Well, in, in your situation in particular, it was uh, according to the report that was released this week on the election integrity itself, uh, it was a WeChat story that was posted saying that legislation you would sponsor will require all individuals or groups with ties to China to register as agents of the Chinese government. Whether that was foreign or domestic or what, how did that affect your race in your view? Did that cost you your seat, do you think? My, many of my constituents rely on informations and connections via this app called WeChat. And imagine if you if you hear that uh, your MP, should he form part of the government, would put this ad and endanger uh, not just yourself, but also your relatives and your friends, uh, your future generations. But also, uh, there has also been um, completely fake uh, misinformation circulating about uh, the conservative under uh, leadership of Aaron O'Toole would actually outright ban WeChat in Canada and therefore severing the very connection that you have with uh, your relatives, your loved ones, your families in China or even conducting business. So if you put yourself in their shoes, you will be subject to these coercions that would actually cause so much fear in you um, there are constituents that I was told by a local MP when while he while she was campaigning that uh, the constituents would actually take her outside, switch off the phone and cry to her and say, I'm sorry, I can't support you because these are dangerous situations. It's endangering my family at home. So these right. are coercions that are that are presented to our uh, constituents right now. So d despite everything, the, the high level conclusion from the committee that overlooks the elections and gets inputs from the RCMP, the communication security establishment from CSIS, they have concluded that none of this affected the integrity of the election at the top level, but even based on the testimony over the last couple of days, they don't even necessarily believe it affected the integrity at individual riding levels. Are you satisfied with that conclusion based on everything you've heard? I don't think anybody has questioned the outcome mm -hmm. of the 2019-2021 elections. 
Um, I, I, I think uh, right now, at this moment, the interference that we are facing, the infiltration that we are we're looking at, uh, it, it's not as uh, severe as you know that scenario. But if given the inaction of our government, given the 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 wrong signal that we're sen sensing, uh, sending to overseas foreign interference uh, actors, they will get the message that Canada is weak, Canada is not uh, willing to protect itself. And guess what? They will up the ante, up the game, and will continue to. Who knows? Maybe one day they will finally change the government for, for Canadians. And that's not something that we want to see, no matter how long it will take. Uh, it's just important that just like the Australians and Americans, we need to protect ourselves. And the first step, the very minimal, it's a foreign influence registry. Right. And I certainly didn't want to leave the impression to anybody listening to this conversation that you're in any way uh, engaging in election denialism. You have very specific concerns about interference and, and its impact and potentially for future elections as this escalates and becomes more complex. I, I, I wonder, sir, there, there's a significant Chinese Canadian population in your riding. Uh, a lot has been made about the pressure Chinese Canadians are maybe put under by the regime in Beijing. The Prime Minister has cited anti-Asian -A racism in defending uh, Han Dong, a Liberal MP who is denying reports that, that ch the Chinese government helped him get elected as part of a campaign to interfere in this. What effect is this ha having on, on the Asian Canadian community, do you think, and the Chinese Canadian community in particular? Well, it's interesting that you asked that because as of just very recently, I was invited to uh, an ethnic Chinese Mandarin speaking current affair talk show, and among the the, talk, the speakers uh, in that in the panelist, uh, one of them is still continue to spread the same kind of false information about my private member bill that it will jeopardize uh, all Canadians uh, of Chinese descent. And so uh, I think the sphere is still present in the in the Chinese community, and unfortunately, the prime minister's um, you know attempt to hide behind a race card does not help, uh, and in fact, it's actually harming uh, the confidence of many of our our, our uh, Chinese Canadians. What happens uh, when real anti-Asian? racism happens and and you know it's it's actually trivializing uh this problem and also what about kenny chu what about alice wong what about all the other uh chinese of uh of uh sorry uh, mps of uh, ethnic origins uh that have been harmed potentially by uh, these foreign interference why is our prime minister not speaking up for us and, uh, you know, have a little faith and trust and look into, take a serious look into what CSIS is presenting us. And for the prime minister today to take such a careless uh, and, and, and uh, completely ignorant uh, situations on, on what our, our security apparatus has been sounding, has been sounding, uh, to me, is just very disappointing, David. So, Kenichu, I wonder... Um... Where are you in terms of a political career after this? I mean, if this interference that, that you experienced in your writing, if this may have played a role in you losing because of the circumstances you, you outlined, are you going to run again? Do you think you have an appetite to get back into this, or are you done? It's a huge price to pay, and uh, I, I surely still care about my country calendar. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the important things today, it's not about Kenny Chu running or not. The important the critical thing today is whether we'll take this foreign interference jeopardy uh, uh, um, and also dangerous uh, actions by foreign uh, actors seriously. And we'll, we'll have to sound the you know, action. We have to actually send out the message to these foreign actors. Again, I don't want to pinpoint just the Chinese Communist Party and doing that. They certainly has been the one that has been most resourceful and active, but CSIS have been warning us that Iranians, uh, the Persian regimes, uh, the, the Russians regimes, has also been uh, attempting to or have action uh, to interfere, infiltrate or, or in, interfere with our, our matters. So it's time for our government to stand up and send out the message to all these regimes that these actions are not acceptable and we will safeguard not just our, our institution, our democracy, but also our, our diaspora communities from these manipulations. Kenny Chu, I, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you.